Simon, um, the great and the good were out last night at uh, the Grosvenor House Hotel in uh, London. Oh, my old home. You're Now, you stayed there for... I was telling a couple of people... Ten years I lived there. You lived there for ten years? Ten years, yeah. in, in the heart of Mayfair? Correct, ten years. The red bar was my front room. <laughs> Tragically, when, I, I, from my bar bills. And when you checked out... It was one hell of a bill. It was, yeah. For 10 years I lived there. 10 years I wasn't, uh, I was, the way I lived, I didn't have any property in the UK for various reasons that people might be able to deduce. Um, and <laughs> Grosvenor was my home. But you criticised Jose Mourinho for living in a hotel when he was up in Manchester. But I was an employer, not an employee. Oh, I There's see. There's a difference. Right, okay. I, I understand it was a seven-figure checkout bill, wasn't it? It, it was what it was, but it's, a, it's my favourite. <laughs> it's my favourite hotel. It's one of my favourite mm. stories of yours. I love it. Um, yeah, um, it was quite a night, actually. Legends of Football, uh, the annual... In the, the Great Room. The, in the Great Room, the annual charity gala night for the Nordoff Robbins Music Therapy at the Grosvenor House Hotel in London. It was honouring legends of the game, Farah Williams, MBA, uh, MBE. MBE. Wayne Rooney was uh, there as well, being honoured, and it was wonderful. It was quite It was quite a night. Um, Wayne absolutely under siege from people as soon as he set foot in the place. Uh, for pictures and the like it was quite an evening but it gave me a chance to speak to Wayne uh, and to ask him how life was going for him as a manager at Plymouth and you you have said one or two things about Wayne in the past but now you've conceded I tell you what he's doing rather well and I put it to Wayne last night you enjoying things at Plymouth yeah loving it obviously it's a big challenge going into Argyle but um you know, I've met her head on really, and you know, great relationship with the, the owner, the board, and all the staff. Um, so, yeah, I think we started the season really well, so, really enjoying it. And do you feel you're getting into your stride now with it? I mean, obviously, the results are showing that. Yeah, no, I think the pre season is, is always a, a, a big thing to have as well. And against obviously going into to Birmingham City at the time, potentially was, wasn't the best thing, um, but yeah, I've been in obviously quite early, got me signings in quite early had the pre-season and, and the lads have been great so obviously I have to give all the praise to the players because um, the work they're putting in and the performance they're putting in has been, been outstanding. Simon, all credit to him, he said this morning live on air, look, I've said some things about Wayne but I have to say he's doing well and that's got to be said publicly. I mean, are you happy that to a degree he's, he's changed his tune? Oh, listen, um, again, sometimes, um, you know, I was a young manager and sometimes when you get criticised it, as a young manager, it's difficult um, to take a time, especially if you feel you, you don't deserve it. But, um, yeah, ultimately, it's always nice when you have nice words um, from anyone, really. So, yeah, hopefully I can keep proving time wrong. And this is a nice night, isn't it? Being yeah, honoured like this. Yeah, it is. It's um, great, obviously. It's always great when you, you get individual awards and... Hopefully, um, this award is, is a sign of what all my teammates has helped me achieve, so I'm, I'm really grateful for all my teammates as well. I'm glad we're all friends again, Wayne. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> we're, we are getting there. Mm. And, he, and he has done well in recent games with Plymouth. Yeah. And I'd like to think that that might continue because, you know, it, 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 there'll be a lot of people out there, Simon, wanting Wayne Rooney to fail as a manager. But because, they shouldn't. No one and should and they, shouldn't. To fail. No. they shouldn't. They no. shouldn't. Um, but, but that's be, just a fact be, of life. There'll be people out there that are on a manager, managerial treadmill that can't get jobs, that think they've earned the right to have a job, not an ex-footballer that's just turned into a manager, getting jobs that they think will probably be unfair. And there's an element of fairness about that observation, but I don't think that Wayne Rooney has to prove me wrong because I don't want him to fail. I never started from that premise. So he hasn't got to prove me wrong. He's just got to be focused on what he's trying to achieve, which is yeah. to be a decent manager. Yeah. And the I mean, if you give me something to criticise, I'll criticise it. If you give me something to praise, I'll praise it. And Wayne has to be praised for some of the results he's got this season because he's beaten some of the bigger sides. Sunderland were, were beaten by, by Plymouth and they were going great guns at the time. They've got a good result against Blackburn. I don't, I don't row back from the fact that I think it's ridiculous what his owner said to me and us on the show that I don't consider, I don't consider form as part of the credentials of employing a manager. I think that's illogical, mm. but that's his, that's his prerogative. He's the owner of Plymouth yeah. Argyle. He can make whatever appointments he wants. Yeah. And at this moment in time, there, what there is is more scrutiny. And Wayne must accept the upside of being shoehorned into jobs that perhaps his credentials haven't merited with the downside of having the scrutiny of being Wayne Rooney in a dugout at a football club that you wouldn't expect Wayne Rooney to be part of. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, the great and the good of, from the game were there last night, paying tribute to him and what he achieved, particularly as a player. Um, I mean, th th there can be never any argument about his contribution as a player to English football. Oh, no argument. I mean, he the is only, right up there the only thing with I would the say, very best. That given his talent 
And given that we've seen these world-class stars like Ronaldo and Messi go deeper and longer uh, in their careers, that that perhaps Wayne could have looked after himself a little bit better so that he could have had a longer career. But if he's happy with his career, sure. then that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, uh, as I say, many many gathered last night to to, to pay tribute to Farrah Williams, MBE, uh, Wayne Rooney, of course, being honoured as well. Uh, I had a quick word with uh, Everton boss Sean Dyche. You and I have spoken to him in in this very studio before, and Sean was interesting about speaking about the importance it is these days for for a manager to be able to deal with criticism. It's a really difficult industry. You have to have that. You have to find a toughness within yourself and the resilience that is required. It, I think it's a learned, it's a learned behaviour. I don't think everyone has it, but you learn it over the years and all the knocks you get and you have to stay resolute to what you believe. I mean, it's called leadership. It's just called leadership. Everybody seems in this world to want lots of responsibility. That's but not instilled in everybody. But, no, but then don't be a leader. If you're not a leader, then you shouldn't be managing a football team. Do you think Deitch is a leader? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Whether you, you like Wayne's a leader? I, I don't know enough about Wayne Rooney. I think he, as a player, he led by example because his standards were so exacting. You don't get to be Man United's biggest goal scorer and also at one point England's biggest goal scorer if you're not a, 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 a phenomenal talent. Mm. But whether he's a leader beyond himself, a leader of men is very different to someone that can motivate oneself. He has to turn from a player whose sole focus in life was to look after himself to being a person that leads men. And a lot of people want the responsibility, but they don't want the accountability. And the accountability for, for the roles that you have are that you take criticism and you have to get on with it. And then you have to be, be able to overcome it. Otherwise, you ain't a leader. Because part of leadership is resilience. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you can't deny that Wayne Rooney is probably critiqued more because he is Wayne Rooney. And like anybody else, he's just looking for fairness from people who critique him. But Wayne Rooney is afforded other opportunities because he's Wayne Rooney. So you can't have the up without the downside. If you take the advantages, there was really little reason for Wayne Rooney to have been given the Birmingham job. The credentials that were there previously really didn't merit it. But there was an element of because it's Wayne, and perhaps he interviewed well, I don't know. Yeah. Um... He got an opportunity that perhaps most of us would say, I'm "Not sure where you merit that." So that is the that's the upside of it. So you'll take that. I'll take that then. Then, but now you get the scrutiny because you're Wayne Rooney. Oh no, I don't want that. You can't have it that way. It doesn't work that way. Mm. You know, you dance with the devil. You better know his tune. And the tune that they play is you get an opportunity because you're Wayne Rooney. You're going to be criticised or scrutinised or focused on because you're Wayne Rooney. So you have to get on with it and you have to be successful. That's what you have to be. You have to be good at what you do. And yeah. If you're good at what you do, then you fly high. And if you're not good at what you do, then in this industry that seems to reward mediocrity as a staple diet, then... <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've seen the highs and lows with the likes of Frank Lampard with Stephen Gerrard. It would be good to have a success story regarding a, an English manager would who it? also happened to be there in the game. I think the game needs it. I think we kind of need it I don't in this think, business I think as the game, well. I think the game needs a proper Premier League board, what it actually needs. But I, <laughs> I, I actually think that what it needs is English managers to be better and to evolve and to become better. Because at this moment in time, we're looking at most of the top clubs being managed by overseas management. Yeah. And I'd like to see that change. And we can go down the Harry Redknapp philosophy of, you know, everything's being disadvantaged because my name isn't, you know, Eduardo Suarez. If I was, uh, you know, if I was Eddie Howe, I'd be managing Liverpool, but well, managing a lesser club, because yeah. that was an argument that the age-old institutional mental mentality of English football managers changed. All I want is the best in class. And if it happens to be an Englishman, I'll be delighted. Uh, uh, just for the record, what kind of manager gains your approval? Someone that's good at the job. <laughs> Someone that's good at their job. And there's so many charlatans. There's so many emperor's new clothes out there. There's so many, oh, I work really hard. I work dawn till dusk. Oh, do you? Really? Do you? I mean, the bottom line is, is football management is a wonderful job. It's also a difficult job. If it was an easy job, every bugger in the world would be doing it. So when they say, oh, it's a difficult job, there's a lot of pressure. I'd have that pressure. Most people in life would have the kind of pressure that football managers on to do a job, to be an opportunity to affect outcomes, to be rewarded the way you are, to be lauded and applauded the way that football managers are. And there's too much nonsense and too much introspection and too much navel-gazing about how hard it is. Yeah. It should be hard to be good because otherwise what is good defined by? Yeah. Uh, there's Chinner in Plymouth. Lord Jordan, that's you, um, admitting you got no, a bit no, wrong you, about you, Wayne. You, you, you got to, I've just, just admit you're wrong about Wayne. 
Yeah. Like, what, what am I wrong about? What is it that I'm wrong about? It's a 46-game season. Of course. Your chairman said you've got to finish two spots above the relegation zone. Yeah. Wonderful ambition. You've got a low budget. Lots of clubs have low, low budget. Uh, Luton had a low budget. How about set your stall out at Luton's level then? Okay. Uh, good to see you, Wayne, last night. Thanks for the chat. Thanks for the chat with Jimmy Carragher, Sean Dyche and others. Alex Crook was on duty last night as well. Very good chat with him later on the show with David Moyes. Manchester City against the Premier League. The 115 charges, that's underway. We know that. But separate from that, City and the Premier League have been locked in the courts regarding rules around associated party transactions. Both sides claiming wins this morning. But who did come out on top? We'll discuss that next. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.